Well, hello. Welcome to Friday Night Live. We are back. Yes, we are back. And I am so glad to be here with you and um, everyone that is joining us tonight. We are back. Happy New Year. I guess we could say that, huh? Yeah, Happy New Year. Because we haven't been on since um, before the New Year. So Happy New Year to everyone. We're glad, yeah. glad, glad to be back with you guys. Took a much, took a much needed break. Yes, much needed. Um, we're rested. We're um, fasted up, prayed up, prayed up. Um, word up, all of that, everything up you could think of. Um, we're happy, happy, happy <laughs> to be here on tonight. Um, we I don't have any announcements, uh, Apostle, because we're just getting back. Um, so I don't we can go on and talk about Proverbs 12 tonight. That's where we are. Join us every Friday night right here at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, how, well, how about you just announce the the weekly lineup of services so that we can okay. you know, get that reinforced for the new year? <laughs> right. Right. So on Wednesdays, Winning Wednesday Bible Study. Right. Uh, we are on at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have um, one, two, three, four of us that actually speak. We have Apostle, myself. Um, I'm, the first, I'm the first Wednesday. Um, he's the first Wednesday. Um, Prophetess Debbie is the second Wednesday. I'm right. the third Wednesday. And then we have Dr. Love on the fourth Wednesday. And then if there's a fifth Wednesday, Apostle will pick that Wednesday up. So we are there um, doing doing what we know how to do best is pray and um, studying the word with you. So join us at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then, of course, on Friday, it's Friday Night Live right here on the Friday Night Live page at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Invite somebody. Share, share, share. Get your devices out on tonight and share that we are on. We stopped in Proverbs 11. We're going to pick up Proverbs 12 um, yeah. on tonight, and we'll come back with some other uh, prov Proverbs and other stuff um, next week. Uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit next week, um, but we are back talking about Proverbs. Um, it was called, um, what is, uh, walking, no, picking up a little wisdom. Wait, what is it? Walking through Walk, Proverbs, picking walking up. Walking through Proverbs, picking up some wisdom. That's what it was called. Right. Um, I've been too long. <laughs> We've been gone too long. Yeah. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> walking through Proverbs, picking up some wisdom. Up some wisdom. So, so that's so, what we were. Listen, dude, before we start, um, how about we? How about we? How about we start off like this? Uh, we we're in what day eighteen of our fast. Yeah. Um no. Day yeah. 18, yeah. 19. Okay. 18, 19. One of those. Who's, who's yeah. track? Yes. What I do know is that we're almost at the end. <laughs> right. Know that. Right. Um, Today is the 19th. So yeah. we end up so, on the 23rd. Okay, okay. Let me let me let me let me get this in. So uh day 19 of the fast. 19. Yes. This is day 18. I'm right. Month, yeah, okay. Day 18. So, so we're starting off this year again, like we have done in years past, doing 21 days of fasting. And uh, my question to you is Are there some definites that you have uh, received from the fast thus far? Um, There is. Um, I do. I, I want to say this before I answer that. Um, okay. We don't just fast at the first of the year. So just let everyone know that because, you know, I, I don't want it to sound like it's a fad um, for us because it's not. Um, mm -hmm. So but anyway, for uh, for me, I have um, discovered a little bit more about me, um, yeah. some things that I had not um, gotten rid of. And mm -hmm. then also hearing the Lord's voice um, clearly. Um, he spoke to me and said, now that you're hearing. Now that you can hear me, just obey me. And that that came to me even in my sleep. Um, so not that I wasn't obeying one, not that I couldn't hear him. Um, but there was some things that possibly could have uh, blocked my hearing or not hearing clearly. So yeah. in my sleep, he said to me, now that you're hearing, just obey what you're hearing. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, of course, 
from now on, but that was something that was very clear to me because that was one of my prayers. I wanted to hear the Lord's voice clearly, mm -hmm. um, whether it was his, um, whether it was my spirit speaking to me or whether the word was speaking to me, I just wanted to hear it clearly. So that happened. Um, there was also something that I had told you about, um, about, uh, about money. And I said, we're not going to do that. We're going to, we're going to, the Lord said, not all January. Not all January. Right. And so I said, OK, I'm going to not all January, Lord. OK, I hear you. You know, and I'm thinking like, so what are you going to do? What are you going to show us um, in my mind? What are you going to show us? And sure enough, he has shown um, us by way of growing our business um, mm -hmm. within uh, a couple of weeks of each other. Things start growing um, even more. So that was something that was very, very pronounced for me that I can actually say that God did that. So that that's where I am right now. Yeah, you know we we've, we've been teaching uh, every Monday and Wednesday and about about fasting. But two two teachings in particular that I done one was on procrastination, um, and that's something that uh, the Lord had told me to teach about coming into the fast. Mm -hmm. uh, shamefully, I have to admit that yeah, I I have procrastinated uh, uh, in my life on some things. Um, so, yeah. So when you say, you know, this fast has been different in the way of really confronting myself, um, that's the difference in this fast. And then I also talked about uh, resentment and, and it's it's a, a really, really good teaching. Uh, and I had someone tell me today that they had listened to it and had really enjoyed it and really got some things, gotten some things out of it. Uh, listen, no one no one likes to admit the ugly parts about themselves. <laughs> Uh, no, no. But when you when you are when you are really fasting properly, you know, you can't help but to notice those things. Uh, yeah, you see things about other people. That's easy. But then when the light right. is turned on you, it's not so easy. But if you're going to be everything that God is calling for you to be, you're going to have to confront even those ugly parts of you. And maybe you don't want anyone to know about. You don't want anyone to see. We all have secrets. Uh, we all have parts of us that, want, that we don't want anyone to know about. And that's the and that's the bad thing about it. We pray. We pray a lot of times and we pray over the stuff that we need to really be dealing with. Yes. That's what, that's what this fast is, is really yes. moving all that other stuff out the way and really dealing with the stuff that, you know, you need to be dealing with. So I'm excited. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly excited. Um, we're pushing through to the end. Um, yeah. You know, you start thinking about it's going to be the end pretty soon. Uh, but I think that it has been a um, uh, what I'm saying, a prosperous fast, not mm -hmm. I'm not talking about money or material things. I'm just saying that it's gotten yeah, some things done. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Spiritually. Yes, spiritually yes. yes. It's got some things done um, inside. And that's and that is what counts is our our inside has to transform and change. Yeah, and you, um, and, know, you know, one thing, one thing that you were alluding to, and I'm not going to say that, but I know what you're talking about. But, you know, uh, we don't talk about money a lot on this ministry. We don't even ask for it a lot. No. But, you no. know, I, I was telling you the other day during my prayer time that God impressed upon me for you and I, that we haven't even began to see his. Pro we haven't even began to experience his provision. Correct. Yes. You did say that. And his provision is. Uh, money, things, uh, favor, all of that. Yeah. And yeah. I think that we have not um, because there has been times where you where you feel, like, you know, these are one of my inside things where you feel like you're not worthy or, yeah. or where you yeah. feel like, you know, mm, you know, people might look at me funny or, you know, oh, I don't know if I want to do that or say that. So it is um, a definitely a growth spurt for me yeah. um, in this fast. Um, yeah. I have grown. Um, I have grown hearing God. I have grown reading the word. I know that I usually say, you know, when you open up your word, you should be before you even open it up. You should be asking God to show you show you you first mm -hmm. and then whatever you need to give me to give out, then give me that, too. So I'm whatever is coming in and in, in, in whatever he's telling me to read and all of that, I'm just following his lead. You know, you just want to give up the reins. Um, and yeah. that's why I am in my life. You just give up the reins. Yeah, let, well, let's go ahead and get started in this Proverbs chapter 12. Listen, for okay. those of you that are on tonight, uh, please uh, like, share and comment. 
on tonight. Yes. Please don't, please don't just, please don't just, uh, uh, as 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 Bishop used to say, don't just peek in the window, but uh, like, <laughs> right. share, and comment on tonight. Uh, Bishop, yes. uh, uh, Bishop Hutchins used to say, don't just peek in the window. Uh, right. But, <laughs> but uh, participate on this tonight. Yeah. Don't know you're don't, watching. Don't, don't just peek in the window, but uh, like, share, and comment on tonight. Yes. So yes. Um, see, see who's who's a part of this broadcast. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like and share. Get every hey, all the devices that hey, you have. Jennifer, how are you? Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Glad to see you. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll, I'm gonna let you start off on tonight. Um. Okay. So Proverbs 12, 12, 12 and one. Yes. I have whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. Now, my this is my version, New King James Version. They're calling someone stupid. I know you tell your kids not to call people stupid. But when you're not work, walking in wisdom and you're not listening to instruction, you can be stupid and you can be uh, do stupid things and say stupid things and um, react dumb and those kind of things. So that's why I say that's not so much calling anyone stupid, but if you hate correction, then you're going to make stupid moves. So right. this verse says, whoever loves instruction. So not, you don't have to be um, the preacher or the evangelist or the prophet or the I said, whoever. And so if you're just someone uh, walking down the street and if you're someone on the job, on your job, it does not have to be someone that you go to church with. We would rather for them that go to church, um, love instruction, but sometimes they buck too. So you have to um, know that whoever loves instruction, loves knowledge. You love instruction. That means you like to glean from what you're being told and and it does it it will not take you down the stupid path that this is talking about so that's that's what i got from there um and it again it does not have to be anyone with high accolades it just says whoever it's not loves. for the elite it's not it's not yes. for the elite uh, yes. yeah I, I love i like this verse uh start this chapter starts off with the bang cuz it it, <laughs> literally, it literally lets you know you know that instruction uh bring knowledge but I want to focus in at the uh, uh, the last part of that verse because I'm I'm reading the King James version for saved people, and at that the last part of that verse is <laughs> he that hateth reproof reproof is brute brute is uh, brutish, uh, and brutish means to become as a beast, uh, uh, strongly and grossly sensual, uh, mm. showing little intelligence or sensibility. So for that person, that person that loves in uh, uh, instruction, uh, it says that they love his knowledge. But the one that's opposite is brutish. They have become as a beast. They are they are wild, uh, right. untamable. Uh, uh, they 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 show little uh, intelligence or sensibility. Uh, where the word is concerned, where the instructions and knowledge are concerned, are concerned. Right. So anything that's that's sensible, it isn't sensible to the one that doesn't love instruction and knowledge. It's mm. just the opposite. It's just mm. the opposite, and that's really that's really showing the contrast between that person that loves instruction. You know, you know, there's just some people that that don't like to be told anything. Correct. You know, you can't you can't tell them anything on the job. You know, the supervisor has a hard time reining them in. That's a difficult person to deal with. Yes. God, God, you know, I, I, I and this is just this just came to me. That person that doesn't love instruction and, and knowledge. That's a person that, that that's ha that has a carnal mind. We mm -hmm. know that the Bible says that the carnal mind. Uh, uh, and it's life and peace, and then it goes on to say that it's 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 enmity with God. It's the right. enemy of God, and this is just what this person is right here that doesn't love instruction and knowledge. They are absolutely the enemy of God because they refuse to hear not only God but even God's representatives. Yes, because they have become yeah. brutish. They have become as a beast. They don't. They lack sensibility. They can't receive instruction. 
Right. So this this verse start, this verse starts off with a bang, showing the the contrast between those that that love the word and those who really are opposers of the word. Right. And my and then I'm going to read this commentary um, in, in the Bible, in my Bible. It says the wise person knows that discipline and instruction will bring its own reward. Wow. Yet the person who hates a reprimand hates a reprimand is stupid. <laughs> and in um, the Jewish literally means as stupid as a cow. That's wow. what it means. Wow. <laughs> I don't read know if anybody calling me a again. cow, read but <laughs> yes. Read that again, please. It says the wise person knows that discipline and instruction will bring its own reward. Wow. Yeah. Yet the person who hates a reprimand or hates to be reprimanded wow. is stupid. And literally that means stupid cow in Jewish translation. Stupid. Wow. Person. Wow. Yes. Yes. So I'm not calling anybody a cow tonight. I'm just saying that's how it's translated. Yeah, the um, so, is calling them a cow, not you. We understand. Yeah, right. So um, that is, again, somebody that is untamable. Someone mm. that that's uh, like a wild um, animal that, uh -huh. um, or, or a stubborn donkey. Yeah. Um, you know, don donkeys can be stubborn. They do what they want to do. Um, so that is comparing you to something that cannot be tamed. Yeah. So you or or someone that can be trained or or, you know, when you have a new job, you have to be trained. You don't mm -hmm. automatically know that job when you go in. Mm -hmm. So you have to listen to knowledge and instruction to do the job well. And so since you're not listening, then you're compared to an untamable animal or untamable uh, personality, um, a person that is just out there. You know, I do what I want to do, say what I want to say. Well, you become un unattainable, uh, untamable, and you become a person that people just kind of like shun yeah. um, because there's always some kind of argument behind what you say. Always got an argument, argumentative statement to make or something uh, that is um, negative. And that is that person that that's speaking about. So I thought that was like, oh, OK, that's deep right there. Yeah, real, really. Uh, verse two, it says a good man obtained the favor of the Lord. But a man of wicked devices will he condemn. Let me read it to you again. It says, a good mm -hmm. man obtained the favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. So when I looked at that verse, I just thought about uh, uh, what is a good man? A good man is the man that is uh, discreet, uh, doesn't mm -hmm. forsake the law, uh, retains words of instructions, regards and attends to the word of God. Uh and and I, I like it because those are descriptions of of a good man. All of those are descriptions that we had given when we first started this Bible study right. in right. Proverbs. Because he said, "I wanted you. I want you to regard the word. I want you to mm -hmm. take heed. Uh, I want mm -hmm. you to let this word stick to you. Um, I don't yes. want you to run away from the word. All of those are good descriptions of a man uh, slash a a good woman." These are the yeah. descriptions of what makes a good man or a good woman. Uh, uh, and I love this because uh, Psalms 5 and 12, he says that I'll surround you with favor as a shield. The good man. I'm going to surround mm -hmm. that good man with favor as a shield. So it pays to be a good man or a good woman because God promises that he's going to surround us with favor as a shield. Right. And that also brings me back to like chapter four talks about um, uh, it does mention good man. But then also the person that is uh, good, then they're uh, they retain the word. Right. They retain uh, wisdom. They retain the instruction. Yeah. Um, so a good man will retain it. And then a good man also I uh, also in four talks about having boundaries with people. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, a, a good man has boundaries yes. and it just says a good man. So if we say good man, yes. are we talking about an unsaved man or are we talking about a saved person? Um, you know, people think they're good because they do good deeds, but this is not what this is talking about. This is a righteous man um, that lives by the word of God, that hears the word of God, follows the word of God through instruction and through him hearing the word, hearing God's voice. Mm -hmm. So that's what this good man is talking about. It said he obtains favor. Yeah, so he these, continually, it is given to him because he listens. Yeah. These are literally the characteristics of a good man. 
This is not yeah. about, you know, I think almost mm-hmm. any person has the ability to do a good deed, as you said. Mm-hmm. But this goes further. This goes to who you are at your core. Um, mm-hmm. um, you know, is a, a, a good person may not have the ability to be discreet. Mm-hmm. They may not have the ability to not forsake the instructions that they've been given just because they're a good person. They may lack the ability to retain wisdom that's been imparted. Uh, they may not have uh, regard and, and, and they may not attend to the words and the instructions and the knowledge that's been given to them. They may not have that stickability just because they have been mm-hmm. able to do some, uh, some good deeds. This right. is talking about who that man or that woman is at the core after God has come into their lives. Yes. I now possess the character traits of God. The greater one mm-hmm. that lives on the inside of me, Hallelujah. those are the character traits that now show forth. It's not my goodness. You know, the Bible mm. says, uh, there's a verse of scripture that I like what Paul says, uh, I live. But the way that I'm living is not me, but it's the God that's right. on the inside of me that, Correct. That's, that's living. So it's, right. it's what God has now placed the, the character traits on the inside of us. That's what this good man is. Correct. I, you know what? Really outside of the spirit of God being on the inside of you, I don't have the ability to be a good man. I me neither. And a, no and one. A good does. man and a good right. woman is about being that that person consistently. It's not about right. when the sun is shining, but, but who are you when you're under pressure? Who are you right. when things are going wrong? Who are you when you've been lied on? Who are you when you've been betrayed? Because a good man, I, even being betrayed, I'm still going to lift my hands and give God praise. Correct. Glory to God. Correct. A good man. And that part, is. The bottom can be falling out, and I'm still going to lift my hands and give God praise. Correct. I and I think also with that, you know, you always hear people when people are um, when they when they die. Oh, he was such a good man. But what made him such a good man? Because he provided for his family. Uh, what made him such a good man? Because he treated his neighbor fairly. Uh, what made him such a good man? Um, you know, and and those kind of things. He has to be more than a good man because if if it was possible uh for us to go to 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 meet christ we would just be good men and women but we're we're there's something not there that that would make us to the core the good woman and man that you uh, are Mm -hmm. supposed to be so you have to come into realization that there is something missing um because you are not consistent in here to make you that good man that this word is talking about there's things the there's things of the flesh that you have to get rid of there's things of the heart that you have to get rid of because if we were just going to be good men and women there was no need for Christ to come there was no need for God to interrupt his day and time for mm-hmm. us um if we were just good and the Israelites um, were perfect examples of they just couldn't attain the good obtain the goodness all the time. They couldn't just be good men and women even with each other. So right. we have to know that when God interrupted this process of us thinking we were good, that He did it for a reason because there's no good that dwells within our flesh because we'll do anything at any time um, and thinking that people are good and that's not what this is speaking about. You can be a nice person, but are you what God is supposed what you're supposed to be in God. So that's what I, I got that out of that too. I wrote that, you know, some you of those know, things you down. Know, you know, I can I I I actually can hear somebody somebody saying, well, how do I become how do I become that good man or that good woman? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I, I think most people think that most Christians should be perfect. But we're not perfect. we're not perfect. But what God Correct. places on the inside of us mm-hmm. is perfect. Mm-hmm. We'll never be perfect until he comes, but he places a, a level of himself, a level of perfection on the inside of us that is perfect. And it's, out of, if it's out of that, out of that treasure that the Bible says is hidden in earthen vessels that we then begin to show forth those character traits that causes men and women to say, oh, he's a good man. She's, Correct. A, good, she's a good woman. Right. Yeah, that is um, when 
I know we got to get off this verse, but that oh is uh, what we call the moral compass that we have. Mm -hmm. That's our, you know, there are people that do have good morals, but it goes further than the good morals right. because those morals at one time point in time, they will fail you. You have to have mm -hmm. um, the boundaries, the, um, the abstinence of uh, what you thought you came from, those kind of things. You have to make sure that you're going beyond, oh, I have a good moral compass or, you know, there's some things I don't do and then there's some things that I do do. Well, those all uh, eventually and we will become a sin. Um, so you have to have something that is um, controlling um, or having dominion over those thoughts and those patterns that are not like God. We right. are to be imitators of Christ. Um, right. So it, Christ is not Christ did not go about. Um, it did not say in, in the word that Christ went about when he got mad, he cursed the people out um, right. or when he got upset and told them, uh, get away from me. Um, it did not say that he uh, was when he went off to pray. Um, he didn't pray for the, he prayed for himself. He didn't pray for them. Those kind of things. So we have to be imitators of Christ and mm -hmm. being imitators of Christ. We got to go beyond just being a good person uh, right. because your good person will fail you sometime or another. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, uh, um, as I, I was studying earlier today, uh, the book of Judges, uh, the 17th chapter, I think is the sixth verse. It says that, uh, you know, there was no king in Israel and everyone did as they saw fit. Well, the mm -hmm. king in biblical times was the one that would set the moral temperature and the spiritual temperature for the nation. But there was no king. So everyone right. did as they, as they saw fit, as the Bible says. But, you know, there are times when even though you have morals, your morals still don't match up to the standards of which God has in place. Mm -hmm. Even there, there are times when our morals will even have to come up to yes. another level to meet the standard of yes. God. So, yes. so it's 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 so important to to know, as you said, you, you know earlier. You know, are we are we good just because we do some good deeds? Are we mm -hmm. are we, are we uh, rooted in the fact that my goodness comes from what's placed mm -hmm. on the inside of me? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm going to read this uh, 14 Proverbs 14 and 30. It says a sound heart is life to the body, but mm -hmm. envy is rottenness to the bone. So even a good man has a sound heart. A saved man should have a sound heart. And yeah. a sound heart means a, uh, a, uh, a stable yeah. heart, um, yeah. a consistent heart, not all mm -hmm. over the place. And, you mm -hmm. know, you're up and down sometime and nobody know what, if they want to speak to you or not, because they don't know where you are, those <laughs> right. kind of things. So your heart has to be sound. And the only way that your heart is sound is that you have to let God do the work on that heart, mm -hmm. uh, because those things in the heart are those things that we do not see. Um, cause we can be happy and, you know, and, and speak to people and, you know, not liking them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to have a sound heart. And the only way you'll have a sound heart is that you have to let God fix the heart and come in and transform the heart. So a good man goes much further than what you, what we, everyone wants to think in the world that a good man is. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we, we, we didn't even get to verse three. Verse three, a man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. So if you go back to Proverbs one, um, it talks about the, um, the man that listens to counsel and how he is established. And um, I'm going to go there. Give me a brief moment. Um, I'm sorry. That's not Proverbs one. Never mind. I I'll find it in just a minute. But anyway, so um, ah, a man is not established. So established means um, to have roots, grounds, um, mm -hmm. your foundation. Uh, that's what established means. And so most people that don't know about God or don't know about the word or don't know much about it, they don't have mm -hmm. a great foundation. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a great foundation, then you'll have anything to build on. Um, mm -hmm. And so since you don't have anything to build on, then there is a possibility that you're going to you know, slide off to the side and not listen to instruction and not be wise and not follow 
uh, the directions that you've been given, but you have to be established. It says a man is not established by wickedness, wickedness and sin will have you doing a whole lot of things. You know, people say, you know, uh, sin will take you as far as you want to go. Um, and then it will, it'll just drop you and leave you there and not give you any kind of way to recover from it. So that is what, what this scripture is, is saying is man is not established by, by wickedness. There is no establishment there. There is no foundation in there because you will go further and further in sin. And when you get to that point, you're like, how did I even get here? Mm -hmm. Why am I here? You know, so that is um, that is part of that. It says, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Um, and that means that you are uh, first, you're listening to instruction. Second, you're following the instruction. You're right. being discretionary. You're established. Your heart is um, beginning to transform. Your mind is being renewed because you have listened to what is going on around you in your church or whoever's discipling you and those kind of things. If you want to be, I know the old people say, if you want to be kept, you can be kept. But mm -hmm. the only way you're going to be kept is by the word of God and listening to wise instruction and following uh, knowledgeable people in the word. That's how you'll be kept. Yeah, I, I think this verse literally literally lets us know that what's what's in me will help to anchor me. And I love the mm -hmm. fact that you mentioned uh, a foundation because in Matthew, the seventh chapter, uh, there is a contrast between one that built his house on a rock and one that built his house on uh, sand. And we know that the Bible yes. says that a great wind came, that house fell and great was the fall of it. But when you build your house on a solid on a solid foundation, we, we know that it's going to provide you with uh, some some uh, uh, stability. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it rains or if the wind blows, that house is going to stand. But everybody right. doesn't start off being built on that solid foundation. There are mm -hmm. times when we start building. And if that if, if that building isn't put together right, when they come out to inspect it, if it's off, if the tolerance wow. isn't right in the corners and stuff, uh, construction stops, you have to tear it down. You have to start all over start again. All over again. For, all, yes. for all of us, we have all had to rebuild at times. Yes. It may, not, oh, wow. it may not have been something that we've done purposely, but for some reason, our foundation was faulty. You know, yes. someone lied on us and it just undid, it just, and un, it just undid everything. Someone betrayed yes. us and it undid everything. Um, I've had that happen in the past, but now, now, because my foundation is solid, because yes. I've been established, um, yes. I, I have some seasoning now, you know, yes. when the winds blow, I don't have to go back and start all over again. When the right. winds blow, I don't have to stop construction and tear it down and rebuild. Mm -hmm. I can stand in the middle of the storm. What's in me, my, my. what's in me is going to help anchor me. And when you have mm -hmm. to shut down construction, mm -hmm. when you have to start the building process all over again, it means that it wasn't enough on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. You didn't have enough of God, the greater one, you'd have enough of him on the inside of you. Because if you my have Lord. him on the inside of you like you should, I can stand through the storm. I can yes. stand when the winds blow. I can stand yes. when someone turns their back on me. I can stand during financial struggles. Yes. In me is going to help anchor me. The Bible mm -hmm. says that we have this anchor. We have this treasure on the inside mm -hmm. of us. That treasure is what helps to anchor me. Yes. It is the spirit of God. And yes. I have to allow the spirit of God to permeate every area of my being. So mm. that when the wind comes, when the rains come, when the enemy comes, I am still able to stand because of what's on the inside of me. Again, as Paul Ooh. said, it's not me that the way that I'm living, but it's because of what's on Hallelujah. the inside of me. Go Thank you, God. Because mm. of what's inside of me, I'm anchored. Because of what's inside of me, I can still stand. Because yes. of what's inside of me, when life turns upside down, I'm still anchored. And the Bible says when we have anchor, we have we have hope. Glory to God as an anchor. My Lord. My God. My God. So <laughs> Psalms 1 and 3, it says Glory he shall be like God. a tree he cut planted by the rivers of water. 
that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So planted means stability. Thank you, Lord. So this person, this man that we're talking about, this good man, um, whoever you are, whoever, woman or man, if you're established in the word of God, you're planted, you have stability. So when apostle is not available, when I'm not available to pray for you, you're already ready to pray for yourself. You're already uh, established and you're stable enough in your walk with Christ to pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so David also in Psalms, he talks about praying. He had to pray for himself. I got to encourage myself Mm -hmm. at one point in time because the prophet's not around. The priest's not around. uh, My friends are not around. So in this time, as an established man or woman in the word of God, then you have the ability to encourage yourself. You have the ability to pray yourself through. You have the ability to stand on your own two feet. You cannot be like the wicked man because the wicked man will fall. The wicked man, he will resort to anything to deliver himself out of what he is doing. Hallelujah. But the established man or woman of God has the ability to come forth and say, hey, nope, I'm not going to be ran over today. You're not going to do me any kind of way. Satan, life, you got to take the back seat today because I'm an established person. I'm a planted. I'm stable in the word of God. And now this is where I am. And there is nothing that can uproot me uh, from this uh, process. Um, So we got to know at some point in time that there, and that's part of growing up. So we got to know when when to mature and when we are mature to be be and notice our stability and your foundation has to come through prayer, fasting, and the word and listening to wisdom and knowledge. You yeah. cannot do this um, just, just, you know, on your own and you don't think you need any help. You definitely need some help. And this is how you do it. But it says, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved, cannot be moved. The so once you are established to have stability and mature, nothing should be able to move you from your um, your spots, you know, wherever you're planted at. Um, you know, some people get mad and, and leave churches and things like that. Um, but if God has not told you to move from that place, do not move from that place. Don't let anyone else's experiences, anyone else's thoughts move you from where you are. So the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Yeah, you know, I, I I like that because the the roots, even uh, Thank you. Uh, on, on, on regular che- trees and, and palms, roots that helps to hold you in place. Thank, yes, yes. Come on, yes. speak, to that, speak to that a little more. Yes. The root, the um, the right, the root says yes. that the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Speak mm. to that a little more. So the root, root, the uh, like Apostle said, the roots are um, sometimes they're so deep in the ground, they would have to take, instru- um, I, I can't even think of the name of it, I've seen it before, but it's almost like a jackhammer, a longer jackhammer to even cut the root off because they're so deep. So as you are walking with Christ and as you are in Christ and as you are listening to knowledge and instruction, your roots become deeper. Your, um, your maturity becomes, you grow and you grow and there's nothing again that can move you from saying, nope, God, I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I'm unsure about who God is. I'm unsure about my walk. I'm unsure about who he is and what he's done. And as and you cannot get that from a person that is rooted in Christ. There's um, in Romans, it talks about being rooted in him. In John, it talks about being rooted in him. And it talks about being part of that vine that it, uh, and you're attached to the tree and nothing can move you from that place. You have to know that at, at some point in time, there is time for you to grow up. It's time for you to listen. It's mm-hmm. time for you to receive knowledge. It's even time for you to receive correction because that is part of your roots. That is what's going to grow your, uh, your, uh, your relationship with Christ. And the roots get stronger. They get longer. 
stronger. They yeah. um they withstand water a lot. They withstand life a lot, and yeah. that's what needs to be happening to your roots. So if your roots are just dangling and you know they ready, they fresh and can be cut off, then there's some more growing to do. There's some more dying to do. There's some more listening to do. There's some more um establishing relationship with people that can disciple you. So yeah. you got to be um, prepared in your mind to accept, you know what? My roots ain't deep enough. Yeah. Okay. Since my yeah. roots are not deep enough, what do I do next? How do I do next? Where do I go? Well, you know, you know, one of the things I was always ama amazed by Thank you, Lord. the tree that was outside of the house that you grew up in front of. The, the, mm -hmm. the house that you grew up in, that tree that was outside in the front of the house, you know, it had the it had the 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 sidewalk like this. The part that was closest to the tree, it was raised, and then as right. it got on the other side, it it, it, it kind of flattened out, and so it kind of looked like. I always thought like, where where would the roots go? Because it it was there was no no evidence of the root being on the other side. On the ground, right? Yet, yet. Your mom always had to had to call the plumber out every year because the roots yes. were in were in the pipes. The pipes, and I was mm -hmm. always amazed because it just lets you know that roots are not going to let obstacles get in their way. They grow how they yes, they grow how they want yes. So if your if your roots are again mature and established, then they go where they want to go. Yeah. They go where where they are uh, where the water is. They find the water. Right. They find a way to be newish new nurtured, I should say, um, the nourishments that they need. They find their way to that. And you as a safe person should be finding your way to people that are knowledgeable, the people that carry the wisdom, the people that can lead and guide you. If you don't know, you need mm -hmm. to be finding your way to the nurturers. You need to be finding your way to the people that are full of wisdom. So, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Thank you, Lord. All right. So verse four, it says a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But mm -hmm. uh, she that wait a minute, says a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she mm -hmm. that maketh the shamed is a rotten is as rottenness in his bones. Mm. She that maketh a shamed is as rottenness in his bones. Make it mm. she that worketh towards shame will bring shame. She that mm. will shame will bring shame, and that's a certainty. That's a certainty. Mm. And it's and it and I loved it because it says it's as rottenness in his bones. So right. so you know, depending on uh uh what that woman says, what she does, <clears throat> it's as rottenness shows up as rottenness in his bones. Right, and it's it's shameful for both of you. So it's just not her just acting up. Or her just sounding crazy or looking crazy. It's you looking crazy also. And you will cause um, diminishment in your relationship, in your marital relationship, as well as people watching you. You will cause them to diminish respect for, it will diminish the respect for your spouse. So you have to be very careful on how you're speaking about your spouse, men or women. Um, we're supposed to bring honor to our marriage. You cannot just be saying what you want to say, do what you want to say, and then you're all right with your husband. You get all right with him, but then people are looking at him like, didn't you just tell me what just happened at home and now you're lovey-dovey and now you, you know, now I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to say to the man. I don't know what to say to the woman because you've told me everything that has happened and you have become, you have brought shame to your marriage. You have brought embarrassment to your marriage. And that's why it is important when you are arguing, when you've had an argument, you don't get on the phone and call the next person you think that will hear you and answer you wow. because that person, I'm, I'm, and I'm spitting some wisdom on right now because that person will say, you know, well, this is what you told me. And then when they see your spouse the next time, they're going to be side eyeing your spouse because you're going to be in love. You know, you you love that man or woman, oh, man. you're gonna stay right there. <laughs> you're gonna stay right there. And I'm looking at him crazy, like mm, I wouldn't be bothered with him. But right. you have brought shame to your marriage uh because you have not been wise and you have not been um you have not been 
the the companion that you are supposed to be to that uh, man or woman. So I say, if you're not going to leave, pray, get some counseling, and grab onto folks that have wisdom. That yeah. is not wise for you to blast your husband or your uh, mm-hmm. wife to well, other let me, people. Let, let me remind you something. Remember, we were out to dinner with the couple, and and she twice said. The same thing was very embarrassing to him. And we sat there embarrassed for him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that it that makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Because really you know, you you're sitting there and you're like, you uh, you really didn't I mean, do she, that. I mean, she just aired she just aired him out. Yeah. You really just said that, you know, mm-hmm. in front of us. So next time I see you, am I gonna have the thought of what you said to me about your husband? Oh, I know what I'm gonna be thinking. Right. You're right. So you you have brought embarrassment. Yeah. So how do you shame. come back from that? Shame. And shame. How do you come back from that? My my um my version says a noble woman. Um, mm-hmm. a noble woman could be a person of means also, but yeah. you don't have to have a have means to be noble. It's just means to be respectful. Right. Uh, right a respectful right. husband or um wife. So you have you need to be respectful in your marriage. Um and respectful of other people because again, the people don't People are not as forgiving of your spouse as you are because you're the one that's there and they're not. Amen. So you have to be really, right. really careful with that. Um, and that and that's Proverbs 31. You can go in Proverbs 31 and it gives you wisdom and teaching right. on how you should be um, in your marriage. Um, of course, I know people want to talk about, oh, that's old fogey stuff, whatever. But it's really not. It's, it's just not. really uh, it's about respecting um, each other. Um, and mm-hmm. if you respect each other, then you won't have to be, nothing is going to be shameful, embarrassing, or rottenness to the bone. You right. basically say you killing your husband. Right. You know, that's what it's saying. You kill your yeah. husband um, yeah. because you brought shame. You're killing him. You know, yeah. you're killing him in the face of people, in the face of God. So, yeah, that that's what you're doing. You don't have to be that way, though. And you, again, you got to listen to wisdom and, and knowledge um, and right. people that will help you through that. So, that that's what I got. You all right now? You okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go, ahead. Go to verse okay. five if you, if you want. Okay. Verse five, it says, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. Mm. It says the thoughts of the righteous are right. So mm. even your thinking has is your, your thinking is right. Mm-hmm. It should be right anyway. So that's where, again, we come in with Romans 12 and 2, 1 through 2, talks about transforming, re- renewing the mind. Mm-hmm. It says your thoughts of the righteous are right. The so you should be right. thinking right. right. Just your thoughts, not something that come out of your mouth, yeah. not something that yeah. you say, your thoughts, what you're thinking in your mind, renewing your mind, transforming mm-hmm. your mind. Your thoughts should even be holy. Yeah. So if your thoughts are not holy, that's what the word is for. That's what prayer is for. And that is what fasting is for. I said, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. So they'll tell you anything. You know, if people tell you something just because you want to hear it. And they're not really being uh, your friends and not really being um, a wise counselor. They're just kind of being deceitful and trying to see which way you're going to go. Those kind of things. That's what that is talking about. So the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. So if you have a person in your life um, that is telling you to do one thing, but they're not doing it, they're being deceitful. Mm -hmm. Um, So you or, or being, you know, showing discontent or malcontent in your relationship. So you have to be very careful about, again, who you receive counseling from, who you Mm -hmm. get wisdom from knowledge from. Um, And if you're saved, I'm, I'm not saying there's not people that's unsafe to have wisdom, but if you're walking with Christ, I would suggest that you not get, um, counseling or wisdom from people that are not, that are not doing the same thing that you're doing. Right. Um, because a lot of times that's out of uh, what they think and not so much what, you know, God's wisdom or godly wisdom. So, Yeah. I, I, uh, verse five for me, it just shows the extreme opposite of the nature between the righteous and the wicked. Mm. I mean, that's the long, extreme and short, opposite. That's, the long that's the long and short of it. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the thoughts of the righteous are right mm-hmm. and the, the 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 thoughts of counsels of the wicked are deceit 
And I see like um, really verse five through eight, um, it talks about the sinner's life and it always has a repercussion from it uh, right. or repercussions that go with it. And it just never ends well. If you read in the word, all all in the word as you being a sinner, it just never wins. It never uh, you never end well or win with that. It says the wages of sin is death. Romans six twenty three says right. the uh, part of it says the the last part says the wages of sin is death. So the payment is is that you're ultimately if you don't receive Christ, you're going to die, uh, yeah. and you know hell is your home. But if you are a person um, that has received him, that there is a great reward for that. So five through eight definitely takes you through the walk of a sinner's life. And there's always repercussions for you sinning. There's always repercussions from you using your own will also as a saved person. Um, because yeah. again, apostle said you're not perfect, um, yeah. but you using your own will, there's repercussions for that also. So well, I thought that was, um, that was, you know, five through eight, I was like, that's a big bulk of telling you what you should not do. It is. Who you should uh, not do. It is, because verse, verse six, it says, the words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but mm. the mouth of the it's upright shall deliver, shall deliver them. So the words of mm. the wicked are the words of the wicked are to wound, and the words of the righteous should deliver him mm. or her first. Mm. Deliverance is in our words for other people first. Deliverance sometimes is for you first. Your words Correct. have the ability to, to deliver you. We're talking about the righteous here. Why would my words only have the uh, ability to deliver others? No, I mm. possess the ability with the word to deliver myself. Yes. self deliver. Yes. yes. Um, Proverbs 8 and 8 says, all the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. And mm -hmm. then also it talks about in, I think it's six, uh, maybe five or six. It talks about how your mouth is a well of life. Yeah. Um, so you, as a safe person, you have life, death and life you do carry in your tongue. Um, so you can kill somebody with your mouth, their character, who they are, or you can give them life and tell them, yes, you can make it. You can encourage them. Right. You can give them wisdom. Right. You can give them knowledge. You, and you can even correct them um, in that because it brings life. So we as safe folk, we should not be spreading death. Um, but we know that that sometimes happens. So you, again, have to be mm -hmm. the root of the righteous. They cannot be moved. You got to be established just right. in case that comes in your time and in your life. Uh, but that is that the mouth of the upright will deliver them. It gives life. So I, I like that one, too. Um, yeah. The wicked are in verse seven. Oh, I didn't have anything for that. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. You can read. You can read seven and eight because okay. you said you, they were all tied together. You can read seven and eight, and then we'll get out of here. Okay. It says the wicked are overthrown and are no more, but mm -hmm. the house of the righteous will stand. Mm -hmm. A man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is a, of perverse heart will be despised. The wicked are overthrown and they are no more. Wow. So you, um. I'm just going to break this down as a, a single person, as a person that has accepted Christ and mm -hmm. you have said, I don't want to be in this lifestyle anymore. That means your wickedness, your, your flesh has been overthrown. You have said, nope, I am not going to live unsaved anymore. I am yielding to Christ. I am giving my life over and that has been overthrown. So overthrown means to, uh, uh, to get rid of, to not um, be able, it won't grow anymore. Those kind of, it's not an established uh, guideline for you anymore. It's been overthrown. So you are able to live as the rooted um, good man and have what God wants you to have as long as you are following the wisdom and instructions that we are talking about. It says, whoever love instructions, love knowledge. But if you don't, and you hate correction, then you are stupid or you are a brute. So we on tonight, I hope that you got something out of those eight verses that we just All right. did. All right. Well, let's pray and let's pray and get out of here. Father, we thank you for mm -hmm. uh, this time around your word. And we ask that you would help yes. us take all of these principles that we have discussed and uh, add them to our lives that we can live thereby, uh, giving you glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name. Yes. We, pray. we just thank you. 
Listen, as always, always a pleasure to be with you. Any last words? Nope, don't have any. Be glad to see you guys next week, right here, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, well, I guess that's that. We'll see you that's next That's it. Week. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Are you looking for a place to grow your ministry? Join Winning in Prayer TV Christian Broadcasting on Roku. Your ministry will be shared on social media platforms, streamed on Roku with the reach of 55 million homes. It will be your choice of day and time, professional editing, and a low weekly cost of $25 a week. Contact us today at 941-782-8322 or you can email at Winning in Prayer tv at gmail.com again contact us at 941-782-8322 winning in prayer tv at gmail.com to get more information thank you and hope to hear from you soon (laughs) 